Well, here is what became of one of my uh, trash-picked computers. This is the Dell Optiplex GX150 that was trash-picked. And you can see I have, uh, haven't really changed much about it. CD drive is still missing its bezel, but uh, that's not a big deal. I did kind of break the case. I, uh, when I was working on the interior, the floppy eject button fell deep into the case, and uh, I actually didn't know where the hell it landed because uh, I, I just didn't see where it went, but it fell out of place. The floppy drive does work, but um, of course you won't be able to eject it without having to stick something in this hole here to hit the switch. Um, I was able to revive. I was able to get the DVD drive or the CD drive working, uh, but it only reads it reads CDs best when it's positioned vertically like this, um, or when it's positioned horizontally. Sorry, I'm just really tired. Didn't get a lot of sleep last night. It's about 6:21 p.m. over here. Now this machine was interesting because. Um, when I first got it, it had a corrupted installation of Windows 2000 Professional on it and just booted to a blue screen of death. So I tried to reload Windows on it, um, Windows 2000, but I, was un I kept getting a keyboard failure error with both PS2 and uh, USB keyboards. So, I tried replacing the CMOS battery, tried looking up the error on Dell's website to see what other troubleshooting steps I could take to fix that. None of it worked, so I ended up replacing the motherboard in this unit. Though, after that, I still got a keyboard failure error when using a PS2 keyboard, but not with a USB keyboard. But even with a USB keyboard, when it got to the screen that said press any key to boot from the CD, it, the keyboard would not respond at all, though I could strangely get into the BIOS. I could hit F2, so the, but then the keyboard went completely dead. And I also tried loading Windows ME on the hard drive too, and uh, even XP. Unfortunately, my attempts to try to install it on this machine were unsuccessful. Now you can see clearly here that it has Windows ME installed on it now. It's the original 10 gigabyte hard drive manufactured a few days before 9-11 in 2001. Um, but it's a West standard Western Digital 10 gig drive. Um, but I ended what I ended up doing to bypass the keyboard failure is I put it into my Optiplex GX270 down there, which also had its motherboard replaced due to a keyboard failure error. Um, I put the hard drive in there and uh, was able to load Windows on it through that machine, and then I just transferred the drive back over to this computer. Um, and then, of course, I installed all the drivers, downloaded them from the Dell website and whatnot. Um, but I also uh, did a few other upgrades to this machine. I'm going to set the camera down so I can open the case. We can actually see the, see the guts of this machine. So here's the inside, what it looks like. I added a uh, NVIDIA TN2 M64 16 megabyte graphics chip in the AGP slot. It's a slimline card with a VGA out. It's a very nice video card. Um, the reason I loaded Windows Millennium is because I did try uh, loading the driver on Windows 2000 and unfortunately it caused a blue screen of death. So it seems like this video card's driver is only compatible with Windows 9X so then I switched to ME uh, from 2K. But if you removed the video card and went back to the onboard video card, you could probably load XP on this machine and have a compatible video driver, as this Intel Springdale video should be compatible with Windows XP, and there were XP drivers on Dell's website. There's the RAM, which I upgraded from the original 256 megabytes to 512 megabytes, which is the max. It's SD RAM. The original module is on the left. The new module is on the right. I just found that in, a sp in my spare parts collection. So I upgraded the RAM and maxed it out at 512 megabytes. There is the Western Digital 10 gigabyte hard drive, WD100, and the CD-ROM and floppy connections. And there is the uh, Pentium 3 heatsink, right there. I'll go ahead and close the case. Now the hard drive technically is not mounted correctly. 
it was a really it was a real pain in the rear end to install it because it's like trying to fit a square peg through a round hole. Uh, the hard drive mounting brackets, I actually broke one of them, so I, had to re I replaced it with a spare from my Optiplex GX270. But I ended up putting not putting the screws in on the top mounting bracket because I just couldn't figure out how to get the damn thing in uh, in the right way because there was no way, when the case is open, the hard drive uh, caddy is in is inward, in, like just is squeezed in there. I have no idea how the person who built this computer put that hard drive in originally. They must have done it before they put the case on because I couldn't figure out how the hell they installed it. But here's the computer now. It's got Windows Millennium on it. No updates, unfortunately. I haven't tried to connect it to the internet yet. Um, but I probably will be moving it to the, my uh, main office. My house isn't wired with Ethernet, so I'm stuck using wireless. But, um, go to the system properties here. And there are the specs. Pentium 3 processor, 512 megabytes of RAM, though. Strangely, it only recognizes 511 megabytes of the RAM, but that's probably u Windows using one of the, uh, get megabytes of RAM. Registered to me, of course, and, uh, there's Windows ME, and your classic Windows logo. I also installed Kmeleon, which is about as modern as a browser as you can get on Windows ME. This is version 1.5.4, and it's much better than using IE 5.5 up here. You can upgrade it to IE 6 to make your IE experience even worse, but I didn't even bother because Windows ME hasn't been supported since July 11th, 2006. Ironically, the same day that Windows 98 lost Microsoft support. And there's your Windows Media Player 7. Uh, I don't have any speakers hooked up, but I'll go ahead and open it up. And you can see it's got the uh, sample Beck song loaded in the memory. Uh, oh, okay, never mind. This is the Windows Movie Maker sample file. But Windows Media Player actually runs on here very well. I've tested some 3D graphic effects with it. Windows doesn't seem to be running too too horribly on here. I also installed Adobe Reader 4.0, or Acrobat Reader 4.0 and Microsoft Office 2000 Premium uh, with every Office 2000 program you can think of. Here's the list of programs. Other than that, it's just got the default programs installed. Um, if you're going to be using this for internet purposes, uh, highly unlike, unrec not recommended because Windows ME can only support up to Flash Player 9.0 and if you try going on YouTube, you'll probably end up crashing the crashing the browser, let alone the computer, because this poor old Pentium 3 probably couldn't handle uh, YouTube. But if you were doing basic word, it would make a nice computer for word processing and uh, basic tasks. Of course, you'd probably want to upgrade it to Windows XP so you get at least slightly better support than Windows Millennium. Uh, not sure if the keyboard failure error would rear its ugly head again. But for right now, I'm just going to keep it on Windows ME because, um, you know, I figured if the video driver didn't work on Windows 2000, it probably wouldn't work on Windows XP. So I'm going to keep it at Windows 9X for right now. Other than that, though, this machine has been revived and uh, is working pretty well for me. So it'll probably be on eBay in April. Again, I can't list it now due to my stupid limits. Uh, again, I have to curse eBay for setting limits on newbie sellers but this computer will probably find its way up on eBay in April and if anyone is interested just leave me a comment and uh, uh, but you can even pay me and buy the computer through PayPal if you have a PayPal account just send me 20 bucks and this machine is yours so and if you don't want, and, uh, or you could just wait till April when it goes up on eBay. I'll have a link in the description.